Okay, so uh, hello everyone. I hope you are healthy today. And thank you, Marco, for the nice words and for inviting me to this conference. Uh, thank you for joining in today. I'm Richard Toth, and I'm looking forward to give you today a presentation about artificial intelligence foundations in Asia. So for first, why everybody is talking about AI today? Uh, artificial intelligence is literally everywhere nowadays, but not how you expect. It's nothing fancy. Everything is behind the scenes. I think it's utmost important for everybody to understand uh, how these technologies are, are working, how these are functioning, uh, and the core technologies about artificial intelligence and machine learning, so more businesses and professionals will be able to apply these technologies in their fields to make processes uh, more effective and efficient. And we can reach every goal of our wildest dreams with these technologies, to be honest. If you do not believe me, uh, just watch. Okay, so, but first, uh, who I am? Please let me introduce myself. My name is Richard Toth. I was born in Hungary. Now I'm living in stu and studying in Austria. I'm studying at the Vienna University of Business and Economics, and my major is uh, business informatics. And I have further specializations in business information systems and data science. I am also really proud Microsoft Learn student ambassador since this year for the country of Austria. Uh, furthermore, I, I'm a certified uh, artificial intelligence and machine learning developer in the Azure software. Um, please let me explain you the contents of my presentation. Uh, for first, I will talk about the core foundations of artificial intelligence, so you can get a quick overview about AI technologies. After that, um, I will walk through um, the machine learning technologies and uh, basically I will explain you the basics of them, of these models. And my third chapter uh, will include an introduction to computer vision and I will cover all of these important models in detail. After that, I will explain you the natural language processing and the basic concepts of conversational artificial intelligence applications. And lastly, I will introduce you the Azure, the industry leading cloud computing software by Microsoft. Dave Waters said once, predicting the future is not magic, it's AI. It just instantly grabbed my attention. And why? Because it's actually true. And after my presentation, you will understand why. So now you wonder um, why I am showing you this moving digital Earth. So let me introduce you the Earth 2 supercomputer. Uh, actually, NVIDIA just revealed plans to build the world's most powerful AI supercomputer uh, dedicating to predicting climate change. Uh, and this uh, concept is named Earth2. The system would create a digital twin of Earth in Omniverse, and this model can achieve millions of speedups by combining technologies such as GPU accelerated computing, deep learning, neural networks, and AI supercomputers, along with wide quantities of observed and model data to learn from. Um, unlike predicting only weather, which primarily models atmospheric physics, Climate models are multi-decade uh, simulations that model the physics, chemistry, and biology of atmosphere, waters, ice, 
land and uh, human activities as well. Um, okay, so actually with the help of um, the Earth to supercomputer, countries and cities can get early warnings to adapt and make infrastructures more resilient. And with more accurate predictions, people and nations will be able to act with more urgency. And all the technologies we have invented up to this moment are needed to make Earth 2 project possible. So actually, I cannot image a greater or more important use of these technologies. So now let's jump into AI, artificial intelligence. So artificial intelligence is basically a software and algorithm that imitates human decisions and behavior based on huge number of data. Um, and there is a huge misconception about AI. Uh, AI actually cannot imitate intelligence. It's just basically a creative and attention gra grabbing name of it. It's nothing like a human being. And of course, uh, researchers are developing robots that are really realistic, but it's uh, not the goal of artificial intelligence at all. Artificial intelligence creates quick and automated decisions with low failure rate based on a learned database. And the most important uh, principle is more data leads to less failure. And most common AI workloads are machine learning. This is simply put the way we teach a computer model to make prediction and draw conclusions from data. Um, and Anomaly detection, it's just a, the capability to automatically detect uh, errors or unusual activities in a system by the system itself. So a system will be able to detect their own errors or failures and do proper um, things to be better in the future. Computer vision is the second. It's the capability of software to interpret the world visually through cameras, uh, videos, and images. And NLP, or natural language processing, is the capability for a computer to interpret written or spoken language and respond in kind as well. And conversational AI is the capability of a software uh, called actually bot to participate in conversations. Um, so let's jump into the introduction to machine learning. Machine learning is a, one of the most important technologies behind AI. It's the basic foundation for most AI solutions. And Machine learning is a technique that uses mathematics and statistics to create a model that can predict unknown or future or both uh, values. The goal of the machines is basically to create a predictive model by finding relationships in previous data or uh, databases. Um, we have to understand that machines learn from our data. Uh, most common machine learning models are regression, classification, and clustering. There are also other models, of course, but these are the most important, and I will explain to you all of these three in details. For first, let's start with the machine learning uh, regression model. Um, regression is a machine learning technique uses to predict numeric values. This is really important because other, the other two models, clustering and classification, is not working with numeric values. So regression is an example of supervised machine learning technique in which you train a model using data that includes both the features and known values for a label. After training has been completed, 
you can use the train model to predict labels for new items for which the label is unknown. So I just write, I just wrote here a practical example, and through this you will understand better, and you 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 can understand all of these mod models with these practical examples. So, for example, a bike rental can use history data to predict future events. So, for example, a bike rental rents out a bikes, like bi bicycles, for example, or like more motorbikes, doesn't matter. And a system can basically um, organize the data, uh, for example, of uh, on a rainy weekend in the past how many bikes were rented out so it can um predict predict uh if 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 it rains on a weekend for example in the next month how many bikes will be rented out and also it can be done with, with any kind of situations. It was just an example with a bike rental and with, with, with weather changes. So the next model is classification model. Um, classification is a form of supervised machine learning technique as well as the regression model. So this is used to predict which category or class an item belongs to. There's also a practical example. So a health clinic can use the characteristics of a patient, such as wage, weight, blood pressure, or any other features to predict uh, whether the patient is at risk of diabetes. In this case, the character Characteristics of the patient are the features, and the label is a classification of either one or zero. So it works with a binary system. So there is no two, nor three, or like other options like non-classifiable or something. It works with null or one, or yes or no, non-diabetic or diabetic. The third model of machine learning is the clustering model. Clustering is a form of machine learning that is used to group similar items into clusters based on, uh, based on their features. Uh, clustering is an example of unsupervised machine learning in which you train a model to separate, separate items into clusters based purely on their characteristics. There is no previous known cluster value from which to train the model. I brought you a practical example here as well. So it's like more abstract than the last two. A researcher is so might take measurement of penguins and group them based on similarities in their proportions. So they are just doing clusters uh of similar penguins and animals and the machine learning model is just clustering the unknown penguins in the future to these clusters uh, so i will follow with introduction to computer vision there will be much more models there and i will be explaining all of them to you in detail so what but for first we have to uh, understand what is computer vision as a whole. Computer vision is an area of artificial intelligence in which software systems are designed to per perceive the world visually through cameras, images, and video as well. Uh, there are multiple specific types of computer vision problem that AI engineers and data scientists can solve using a mix of custom machine learning models. Computers are able to process and understand images after learning from a huge amount of data. Uh, applications of computer visions 
are image classification, face detection recognition, optical character recognition, object detection, image analysis, and semantic segmentation. Don't worry, I will explain them all with really good visualizations. So for first, let's start with the image classification model of computer vision. Image classification is a machine learning technique in which the object being classified is an image. To create such a model, you need data that consists of features and their labels. The existing data is a set of categorized images. Dig digital images are made up of an array of pixel values. Uh, this is just an illustration. So, of course, a picture of a banana or a picture of an apple will be not containing the same values for all of the uh, pixels. It's just an illustration. And these are used as features to train the model based on the known image classes. Uh, so this model is trained to match the patterns in the pixel values to set of uh, class labels. So uh, we just put a database uh, to um, computer, uh, for example, with hundreds of pictures of bananas. And almost all of the pictures have the same pixel values for the bananas. So the computer will learn from these data and will be able to classify like unknown pictures for the computer in the future. So if we put a banana, which is, is in, in other lights or other color, a blue banana or whatever, the computer will recognize this as well. And this is, of course, with any kind of, uh, this is just not with just fruits. I just brought you this example because I think it's really easy to understand through these examples. The second is object detection model. It actually goes further than classification. It, we, should, we can call this also as an upgraded uh, version or more complicated or sophisticated version of image classification. Uh, this is to classify individual objects within the image and returns the coordinates of a bounding box that indicates the object's location. And also sometimes you can see over these boxes um, like percentage values. These are the confidence intervals. They are actually trained to identify individual objects within, within an image. So it can not just, um, like, like on the example of the image classification, to classify one object on an image. For example, this, there is a banana on the image. It's able to classify uh like almost every various items is displayed on the picture for example it's in the example it's identifying cars bicycles it can identify if it's a human on the picture traffic light track but we can go of course further if we if we teach the computer it will be also able for example to recognize in this picture trees or buildings or like any other objects. Uh, there's also a model called semantic segmentation. There, an individual, individual pixels of the image are classified according to the object which they belong to. So it's basically one of the most important basic models of uh, autopilot driving. As you can see, the example brings also like um, a driving camera of a car. And uh, the camera just identifying objects, so actually the computer identifying various objects 
real time or uh, with a video real time or in a picture as in this example so to be able to recognize cars uh sky terrain bus bicycles wall buildings or any kind of pedestrians it's a really sophisticated technique um image analysis model goes further uh, it's basically a cooperation of the different models uh, to make description about about a given image so um, it uses all of the models i've just explained to you to describe an image with text face detection and recognition model they are basically very very similar but there are differences of course uh, face detection involves identifying regions of an image that can contain human face and it's returning bounding box coordinates that form a rectangle around the face so it's basically a really important uh, technology for security cameras uh, at airport for example so they are um recognizing where are the persons on uh, a picture or in a video or real time uh, facial recognition identifies for the computer known individuals from their facial uh, features it involves using multiple images of each person you want to recognize uh, to train a model so that it can detect those individuals in new images in the future so i think everybody knows this technology for example if we take a, a selfie a new uh, a selfie with a new uh, friend our iphone just asking us if we can name this person or give a name this person because it recognizes that it's a new person it's a new face in our database that is being unknown until uh, this moment so if for example we name this person wendell uh, the computer or actually the iphone will be able to recognize uh, this person on the future pictures so it will be creating uh, a nice album or a, a slideshow or whatever because it's recognizing this person we, because we told the machine before that who is this person optical character recognition model or ocr model and it's basically the computer's ability to recognize printed and handwritten text in images an OCR model can be trained to recognize individual shapes, letters, numerals, or other elements of text. Uh, I just brought an example to you. Uh, there's a photo of the Toronto Dominion Bank, and the computer can read what's on the picture as a photo but there are on the other end of the scale there is a machine reading comprehension mrc model uh, which is again an upgraded version of ocr model uh, in which an ai system not only reads the text characters but can use a semantic model to interpret what the text is about uh last but not least of course so natural ling language processing or nlp and conversational ai concepts are the next chapter of my presentation let's start with the natural language processing model so it supports applications that can see hear speak with and understand users there are a galore of applications, but they are um, 
really understand, understandable and easy to understand. Um, they are their name is actually almost self-explaining. Um, so I will not cover them in detail in this presentation. Uh, there are text analysis, entity recognition, sentiment analysis, language detection in a picture uh, or video, key freeze extraction. Uh, in, in this technology, the machine will be able to extract the key freezes of a text to make uh, like really understandable notes. Um, speech recognition, language translation, like for example, Google Translator, uh, or semantic language modeling. Uh, conversational AI uh, is using bots to communicate with humans. There are the cor current technologies are able to apply conversational AI, such as voice calls, chat services, emails, social media postings, collaborative workplace tools. These are all classified to, uh, well, so all qualified to be able to deploy conversational AI or bot services to them. Um, the most important thing is that we always have to apply a knowledge base and bot service to be functional. And basically, this is just a two thing what we need, and we are done. So it's not not a really uh, complicated um, process. So, but how to define uh, knowledge base? Uh, there are two important. Um, options but of course we can do like other things as well but the most easy thing is just to upload an existing faq document to the machine as a database or so-called at this moment at the knowledge base and the computer will this will this will be the brain of the bot or we can enter questions and answers manually, but it's really, really time consuming. It's not, uh, it's not recommended to do this version, to enter manually everything. Um, it's a really like a serious project because it will take um, really, really, really much time. It will be really time consuming to do so. Of course, we can do this to, to uh, develop just a really easy, fun bot, just to have fun, just to ask, ask things like, how are you? And we will write uh, answers to this, or how should a bot answer to this question or whatever. But for serious businesses, it's irrelevant. We have to upload an ex existing FAQ document or already, um, um, a perfect database for this. So there are basically, I just, I, I just put two screenshots of uh, chatbot types there. So there are basically the left one is uses. It's just let's call it in in indirect. Um, so we can not write like open questions to to the bot. We can only write so what is shown up. So, for example, how strong is your headache? Uh, we can answer to this question. For uh, this chatbot is basically a uh, uh, healthcare chatbot. So, how strong is your headache? We can choose like mild, moderate, severe, and after that, it, it will ask you questions or you can ask questions as well, but it's total, it makes no sense to ask uh, like questions like, um, how much does a BMW cost from a healthcare chatbot? Because its brain is only the healthcare database or the healthcare questions. So it will be not able to, 
answer you. The left, uh, the right one is basically like um, it's working with open, open questions and answers. You are able to form your questions and answers, so, uh, messages how you want, and the bot will try to find out what are you wanted to say. <laughs> but of course, there is a risk that the bot will not understand what you are wanted to say. So that's why the left version uh, is it's much more uh, seeker if you do want to achieve your goals. But of course, you can apply both of them. There are just much, much more risk if you apply the right one. Um, so let's get jump into Microsoft Azure. So why do you have to choose Asia? So actually, you do not have to choose Asia. Uh, of course, there are other other uh, cloud computing ser services and businesses around there. But I think uh, Microsoft Asia is absolutely the industry industry leading software. Uh, for first, but why do firms need actually AI? Um, it will mean them higher, higher effectivity. So it's much easier to do processes with, a, with the help of AI automated processes than with people. It's more precise. It, it, can, it can work 24 seven. It just means much more effectivity for firms, for example. We can apply easily new methods. So AI helps to apply new methodologies, which can be highly valuable for the firms. Uh, it will mean also uh, really precise targeting, for example, consumer co targeting. So with AI, uh, businesses can uh, better understand and reach their consumers. And also, it will provide uh, firms cognitive prediction so we can better prepare to future ev events. So it's basically can told us what can be the future or what will be what will happen the, the next week. Of course, it's not 100 percent, but with, uh, let's say, 90 percent. So what is Azure? Microsoft Azure is a subscription-based cloud computing service, which is operated by Microsoft for application management via data centers. It provides a really wide range of services, such as software as a service, platform as a service, infrastructure as a service, and supports many different programming languages, tools, and frameworks with easy to use pre-built models as well. Of course, you are able to de develop your own models and deploy to Asia, but it offers at most of the time really, really useful pre-built models, which are really easy to use. And this is a screenshot of how, for example, the cognitive services part of Asia is looking. It's really, it's really, really, really aesthetic, really easy to find things. So it's just, I think, perfect to do these jobs. There are seven. 115 million active users on Microsoft Active Directory as of 2017. 85% of S&P 500 firms are using Asia, and there are almost 120,000 new monthly subscribers on average. So I think these numbers are speaking uh, for itself. We actually, we are speaking about really, really industry leading software here. Um, there are of course more services um, in Asia because it's not just an artificial intelligence and machine learning developer software. 
Uh, there are much more services than that. But as a data scientist or as a machine learning or artificial developer, you will use uh, these three most of the time. That's why I will uh, introduce you these three services uh, briefly. So let's start with the first. The first is machine learning services, but there are two sub subtypes of this service. So first there is Azure Automated Machine Learning Service. It's basically a cloud-based resource, of course, to create, train, deploy, manage, and publish uh, to external uh, platforms machine learning models. It uses automated machine learning. Uh, so we have to supply database and all Asia can decide which one is the best model type for our goal. It helps data scientists to increase efficiency by automating many tasks associated with training models. Uh, it enables to run multiple training sessions in parallel, which is really, really important. That's why uh, businesses are using uh, cloud-based uh, softwares, because they do not have to buy the actual hardware to do machine learning. And if you buy hardware, for example, for machine learning activities, maybe you, you will able only to run one training session at the time. And if it's really complicated, it will take a lot of time. But with uh, cloud-based resources, you are able to run multiple training sessions in parallel. And of course, Azure Automated uh, Machine Learning Services uh, are providing pre-built models uh, as well, or we can, of course, as, as always, we can develop our own models. Uh, so the steps of, uh, of creating such a model or service is for first we have to, this is just explained briefly, of course, that's not, not everything you have to do, it's just the major tabs so you could get an overview of it. So for first you have to create a workspace and after that you create a computing resource in which basically your 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 model will be running so you choose a hardware somewhere and after that you explore data you train the model of course and after that if it's successful you could you can uh, deploy model as a service the other machine learning service which is one of the most innovative i think is just brilliant. Uh, Azure's machine learning designer is actually a drag and drop visual tool for defining steps to create and run sophisticated machine learning pi pipeline for, uh, of course, the machine learning models. So I already explained them to you. Uh, regression, classification, and clustering, with as really important, without any coding experience and without any coding, you can deploy uh, machine learning models. So, for first, you use a uh, use a training pipeline to train and evaluate a model. After, of course, you provided a data set. After that, you create an interference pipeline to predict labels from the from new data. And for third, deploying the interference pipeline as a service for external apps to use. Uh, this is a pipeline model screenshot uh, for regression, actually. Uh, it works with a diabetes data set. After that, it normalizes the data, of course, because it can conclude different formats. So it will use, um, if it's needed, it can also use uh, data mining. After that, it splits data and trains model with two-class logistic regression. After that, it can score model 
and if everything is going all right, evaluating the model. Uh, the second big part of services is cognitive ser services of the Asia software. It, it's basically a set of pre-trained uh, machine learning algorithms that Microsoft has developed to solve problems in the field of AI. It's really a um, wide range, actually, so I will be not able to explain all of them here in this basics presentation. Um, but actually, the goal of the cognitive services is to democratize AI by packaging it into discrete um, or components that are easy for developers to use in their own external apps. Uh, there are five cognitive services APIs. Cognitive service APIs are grouped into five categories. Uh, they are called for uh, the first one is vision. It analyzes images and videos for content and other useful information. Um, second one is speech, tools to improve speech recognition and identify the speaker. Language, understand sentences and intent rather than just words. Um, not by at the knowledge API, it tracks down research from scientific journals for you. And at the search, it applies machine learning to web searching. So uh, these are actually, of course, all applying models that I, I have covered before. These are the names how Azure uses them. The third big services um, are NLP and bot services. So let's look for first at the natural language processing features of Azure. Um, it's, it's Azure providing text analytics. It detects predominant language, sentiment, key phrases, and entities. It also provides speech recognition and synthesis, speech to text, and text to speech processes, translation services. It provides real time or static, translant uh, static translantation, translation sorry, <laughs> to one or more, la more languages. So basically, yes, we are able to do uh, software that we, are, that we can uh, deploy external as well, such as, for example, Google Translator or like whatever only online translator. We are able to create uh, Hundred percently the same um, translator, translator like Google Translator, with the help of Azure, and deploy it as our own business. Um, and of course, it's providing language understanding, where we have to keep in mind three really important aspects. We always have to define in these models uh, the utterance, entity, and the intent. So, for example, if we want to do a um, system with, that can switch the lights on uh, after we say it to them, uh, we have to use then a lang language understanding model. Uh, so, the intent in this case is uh, the light, that will be switched on. And the entity, if he says, please switch the light on, the entity in this case is the light. And the utterance that we are saying to the computer that you have to switch the light on. I hope it, it was understandable. <laughs> um, and also, Azure provides a lot of uh, different bot services, for example, chatbot features. Uh, it provides pre-made databases as well. They are suitable for various fields, for example, like hundreds of fields, but let's say, for example, tourism, healthcare, 
investments, but you can find a lot more. Uh, and what is also important in many languages. So it's not only it's just not only working with with English. You can find many other languages as well in Asia. Um, but we can also create um, or upload our own databases. So uh, the thing of Asia is is not that it everything is provided. Uh, by this, by by Asia automatically, and everyone, every one of these more than seven hundred million uh, consumers uh, are using the same databases. For example, for a tourism um, um, bot, it's not all about this. Uh, they are so Asia is providing also uh, pre-made databases, but we can we can update them with our own on business related uh, aspects and data and we can of course create at, at any part at the automated services as well we can create our own models as well we can code our own models as well and deploy it to uh, Asia you don't have if, 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 if you are professional you do not have to use uh, for example this drag and drop um, model but it's really useful and it's working for 100 percently so after that uh we can choose the bots answers if we deploy the database which can be already provided as uh, by asia as i told you or we can of course create our own preferred answers or let's say outputs so for first we de uh, deploy a database after that the preferred answer outputs and it's ready for external application we can deploy these bot services for our uh skype for our business emails so for example a, co a consumer asks you for for uh what is your cheapest product the bot will be able to automatically answer how do you want it. It's really easy to deploy these bots and really, really, really useful. So um, as I told you, our Azure is a subscription uh, based service and these are the standard pricing and configurations of Azure and there are a lot of lot of options you can choose from and this is why because because so everybody is able to find the best package for themselves of course if you are new to azure or you are just learning this or just using this for fun you want to try out you will be not using a9 standard for example for uh, $3,000 uh, per month. You can choose, for example, A0. It's, it's, it's totally enough. Uh, for example, if you are just, you are just um, trying out uh, or doing for fun, but you can choose, of course, you can always upgrade and choose the most suitable package for yourself. And of course, Microsoft providing um, a discount for students as well. Uh, these, are the, these are the sources of my informations. Uh, feel free to check up on them and uh, read them through. Of course, I've not covered all of the informations in these sources. Um, as I also recommend you the book by Shai Shalev Schwartz called Understanding Machine Learning. It's really easy to read and it's also for beginners. So I would like to thank you for your attention and feel free to contact me on LinkedIn, Facebook or Instagram. My this is you can find me basically everywhere uh, if you type my full name in um, or you can contact me of course uh, via my email address uh, richard.tot at studentambassadors.com uh, thank you one more time
And I hope you enjoy.